everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Uh, today, I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of rambling on and uh, put, put this on the how-to channel. Um, it seems like uh, all of us have a layout plan that we like or we find in a book that we like and it fits the space that we have, which is the first consideration is the space we have. Fits within that, consider, uh, that space that, uh, constraint that you have. And the uh, next thing I think you need to take into consideration is make sure you have enough room for one or two or three people to be in there and look at it and for you to operate it. Uh, that was what I ran into on the old layout is it started encroaching on the, on the uh, people space. And the people space basically dwindled down to falling over each other when we had a couple people in here. Uh, I didn't like it. Of course, I had other motives too, but that's beside the point. But I'm going to just uh, give you some of my thoughts on, on what I did here and what I'm doing and uh, um, things that you should consider when you're building a new uh, model railroad layout. So, let's get into this one. Okay, everybody. I, it just occurred to me I built so many layouts that I've never really gone into this. And uh, as you can see, of course, and as you may know, I'm rebuilding a layout that already existed. But we're going to assume today that you have a plan and you've laid it out on a hollow core door or you've laid it out in a room or something like that. And it occurred to me that a lot of people get the layout plan and they, they like the way it, it uh, looks on paper and runs around and like, to, like the way that it might look running trains on it. But at least in my case, very rarely do I give too much thought to um, what kind of scenery they'll be, be on it. Uh, I've, I have built many layouts and had a theme of scenery, like Southwestern is mostly what I do, uh, and, but never really gave it a concern until I got the layout on where the scenery was going to be, what it was going to do, and what it was going to accomplish. So I'm going to give you a little insight into that today, and let's take a look at what I'm doing. Okay, like I said, this video is going to ramble a little bit, but um, as you can see, all my backdrop and painting and stuff was done for a layout that was much shorter than this, so I'm going to have a lot of the stuff that was on here obstructed. So I guess what I'm saying is uh, I don't have any choice because I'm doing this for a second time and I'm not changing the backdrop. So, But if you're doing a layout, you have to kind of think where are the mountains going to be in the backdrop, where or whatever you want in the backdrop. You've got to be certain that that's where you want it because once you put it there, unless you paint over the whole thing and start over, that's where it's going to be. So uh, that's the first concern is figure out where you want hills and mountains and where you might want a river, where you might want something and then decide where you're going to paint on the backdrop. But what I have, what I have uh, decided to do as far as backdrop on here is, and then you guys know I have that, I've had that on all my layouts and it's going to go back in that same corner, but I've got these hills here that show, but I'm not sure those are the hills that I want to show. And what we did at the fairgrounds is we took a piece of masonite and we cut a, cut a strip and we took the top and just cut the top with a jigsaw like these mountain tops and I believe that's what I'm going to do I have some masonite I'm going to and I have a piece that I actually bought from the fair, brought in from the fairgrounds and I'm going to put that paint that and then I'm going to apply that to this backdrop in a 3D effect so it sticks out about a sixteenth of an inch or a three eighths or three eighths an eighth of an inch or something like that mount it with foam tape or hot glue or some some method that's not too permanent and anyway, it'll stand out, uh, and then I'll mount the scenery from the track back to that. Uh, I think that'll allow me to do the colors and stuff that I want to do and paint all those background mountains that'll go all the way down there on that masonite in the garage as opposed to having to lean over the layout and paint them. Then I can just put them in place and run the scenery up to them. And I will try and show, I'll try and uh, capture a picture off of one of the uh, videos of the club and show you which mountains I'm talking about. But that's how I figure on doing the, the, uh, the backdrop here. Uh, let me get into something else. Since I liked my layout design and I didn't know what scenery was going to go where, 
and now that I've got this raised up and I've got that at one inch I think this will slope backwards and I think at about that one inch level back there I'll have a lake and these things just occur to me after I build the layout I didn't really have a plan but when I saw that big opening open space and I saw the mountains behind and the uh, rain cloud and everything I thought you know that'd be a good place for a lake so what I'm going to do is get some foam. I might get inch and a half foam. I don't know, and build it up a little bit, and then put a. I'm going to build the lake there again. Build the lake outside on the workbench, and then place after I build a pattern to cut out the foam. Then place the lake in there, and then adapt the scenery around it to it. I on one of my layouts I had a little dam, and I'm thinking about put a little dam over here on this side of the lake, and then have it come down and have a little creek that flows underneath these bridges here out to the front of the layout. I think I've said that before. But that's where the water will come from. And then I will, will build the scenery up at an angle where that creek is back and then start raising it up. Uh, and that's just, these are things that just occur to me after I build the layout. It's not something that you have to be rigid about from the beginning, but you kind of have to have a theme in mind. And in this particular case, these stacked bridges and a trestle that's going to go there necessitates me having a reason for them being there. And that reason will be a creek. And I thought about running the creek up to the backdrop. Then I saw this and I thought, lake. And I could put activity on the lake, a campground. I could do all kinds of stuff uh, and some trees around it. Uh, whatever I feel like doing. So that's the game plan there, and that's the reasoning behind it, and that's my thinking behind it, and I hope that you can use that kind of thinking. Okay, most of us have some kind of an idea of something that we want to incorporate on a layout. And in my case, it's a uh, uh, Indian cliff dwelling. And I had one on the layout before, if you remember one the first ACT. And uh, what I've decided is I'm going to try and put that cliff dwelling back in that corner. So there again, I can cut that, I can cut a template for that corner. I can get a piece of foam that fits down in there and brings that up to level. Then I can build the Indian ruin around uh, that corner there. I can, and I can build it off the layout and then install it later. So that's a thought for there. Uh, there'll be a track that goes through a tunnel portal here, uh, somewhere in here, and then makes a curve and comes out here to the front of the layout. That I don't have any scenic uh, plan yet. I am going to have to bring scenery down into this base because if that, that track is going to be at ground level here. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to incorporate that, but I'll come up with something when I get that far. Um, the rest of the scenery is pretty going to be pretty self-explanatory. But let me show you what's next. Okay, and then occasionally um, we have an industry in mind that may have come off another layout. Maybe somebody built it. Maybe it was your dad's or off your dad's layout when he was younger or something. You know, everybody has a reason for having something that they like on a layout. Mine happens to be the unobtainium mine. Uh, not that it's that great of a building or a build, but I, it's just been on every layout kind of like my uh, mesa down there in the corner. So it's going to go in here, so I've got to figure out some kind of, obviously, mountains here that are going to be relatively tall, and then a flat space with a, f with a flat back here that the building can go up against of some kind and then work the mine in there so that that track has a purpose at the unobtainium mine. So there are things that we do plan on having on a layout, and hopefully when you design the layout, you plan on having a curve or something to give you space to put that that item in. Uh, that does not apply to every building that you ever put on a layout, but it does apply to some buildings that you have in your head that you uh, previously w knew you wanted to put on a layout. So that'll be there. Uh, for some reason I'm thinking about, and I don't know whether this will take place, but this is what's popping into my head. I can see these two curve outs here as a big canyon that comes down out of the mountains here and having a uh, curved trestle or some kind of some kind of trestle there so I'm thinking of a big maybe a deep canyon there and cut some of that foam out and put a trestle across there and then have a little less of it down in this area down here I'm just not sure what to do with it when it dumps out down here 
Uh, it may be a, a, just a big crevice between the two mountain ranges or the two mountain peaks, uh, but that's a thought there. So, and, and these are all things that you just have to kind of get a layout uh, laid out and look at it and mull it over in your head and see what you think might go there. What might logically go there? I guess that's what I'm trying to say with all of this rambling I'm doing. But logically, what might be there? And obviously, I wanted, I wanted uh, vertical scenery here. So uh, that's what I've got. And it has to be compact because you can see that I just don't have a lot of space in between the backdrop and the tracks out here. And that's okay because we can fool the eye with all these little tricks of... of uh, 3D, like the 3D backdrop uh, mountains that I was talking about. So anyways, I just uh, wanted to let everybody know that uh, they seem to think that I always have this grandiose plan in my head of how this whole thing's going to look. I have a vision on kind of, once I decide like on the lake and I decide on the mountains and the backdrop and stuff, once I make those decisions after the layout's built, I do... For some reason, my brain is able to register that and uh, nothing else, just that. But um, then I kind of have it in my head as to how that's going to be. And that's kind of a good thing. If not, I would suggest jotting it down on paper so that uh, you, when you get that far, you do have those ideas to work with. Um, I guess if I had to say anything else today... Uh, I would say that always leave space or try and work in some kind of storage space and stuff under the layout uh, because you always have things that you want to store, uh, be it empty boxes for your cars, uh, be it books, be it anything. So always plan on trying to leave some space under the layout to put things. It's That's always pretty handy. Um, I just did the video 9 and I had just put in this shelf here which has already come in handy because I was able to take all the cars that Gavin had out here and was looking for boxes for underneath here so that I can work out here today um, and uh, let me let me just show you the last thing and I'm gonna put this in the next update for the ACT but today it's just gonna go on this little uh, how-to I guess if you call it a how-to or this little uh, tip uh, video okay the last thing I wanted to say is that I uh, wanted you to think about whenever you're doing a layout in a room always leave space for uh, whatever else you want to do that was part of the reason for tearing out what I had because I removed a big section here I could have just as well made this into a workbench uh, as opposed to something to set stuff on um, I had a pretty decent collection of uh, plastic models that I remember as a kid and I wanted a space to put those in this room so that this became a hobby room not just a train room that was totally cluttered with train stuff so I wanted to have some space and now I've got it and always keep that in mind if you have something else if you have other interests to maybe incorporate that in your in your hobby room not just have a train room uh, so that's just a thought um, and I guess that pretty much just wraps up my rambling as uh, far as just uh, layout planning and overthinking stuff. Don't overthink stuff, just get the layout plan you like, but always take a few important things into account, such as the buildings, like I said, that you may want to keep and not keep. So I guess that's about it for today, and I hope I made some sense here. Okay, everybody, uh, that was my rambling about uh, things to think about when you're building a layout. I know it's not uh, a lot of the important things, but it's a lot of things that once people do the important part, neglect to think about whatsoever uh, until after the fact and it's better to kind of take at least a little bit of that into consideration before you start and anyway I hope that helps you all and as usual thanks for watching